Hello class, we're about to start section 2.3, part 1, function notation. Function notation is a method for writing the dependent variable to emphasize that it depends on the independent variable. We have example function, y equals 3x minus 7 can be rewritten as f of x is equal to 3x minus 7. Note, the dependent variable y has been replaced by f of x. F is called the name of the function. The x lets us know that x is the independent variable. F of x is read f of x, not f times x. Now, we go down here to example 1. It says let f of x equals 3x plus 5, and g of t equals t squared minus 2t minus 6, and h of w equals w cubed. Find the following. Okay, so now what we have to do is this here. We look at our lead letter here, which is F. That tells us we're going to use this F formula here, or this F equation. So what we have to do is wherever X appears in this function, we will substitute in negative one-third. So we will have F of negative one-third is equal to three times negative one-third plus five. So we have f of negative one-third is equal to, now we could put this three over one, three goes into three once, three goes into three once. So basically this is one over one times a negative one over one, which we know is negative one plus five. So our final answer would be f of negative one-third is equal to four. That would be our final answer. Okay, now we go here to B. We have G of negative 4, so we use this G formula. This time I'm going to write out the formula as is first, or the equation, before we start substituting. Okay, now we're going to substitute in negative 4 wherever T appears. Now, now we solve negative 4 to the second power, we know it's 16, a minus 2 times a negative 4 would give us a positive 8, and minus 6. So we add g of negative 4 is equal to 16 plus 8 is 24, minus 6 would give us 18. And that is our final answer for b. Now we go here to C. We have H of negative 2. Now, we use the formula H of W is equal to W cubed. Now, in this case, this negative 2 will replace the W's. So we have H of negative 2 is equal to negative 2 to the third power. So we have H of negative 2, and negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. And that is the final answer. Now we come here to D. We're still taking this F formula here. So we will have F of X is equal to 3X plus 5. Now we're going to substitute in A minus 2 in wherever X is. So we have X of A minus 2 is equal to 3 times A minus 2 plus 5. So we have F of A minus 2 is equal to 3A minus 6 plus 5. So we add f of a minus 2 is equal to 3a. Negative 6 plus 5 will give us a minus 1. And this is our final answer. We can't do anything else with it. Now we come down here to e. We have f of x, x such that f of x is equal to a negative two-fifths. So, now this problem is uh, slightly different because it says x such that f of x is equal to a negative two-fifths. So what we're doing here with this x, we're solving for x. This means solve for x. So now, we have to determine what f of x is equal to. Now we already 
know that from the earlier examples f of x is equal to 3x plus 5 so we're going to replace this f of x with 3x plus 5 and set it equal to a negative 2 fifths now we would take this value solve for x so we're going to subtract 5 on both sides so we add 3x is equal to a negative 7.5 then we could divide each side by 3, and x is equal to a negative 2.5. And that is the final answer. Now, one thing I need to warn you about is just because it started out with a negative 2.5 does not mean your answer is going to equal what you started out with. So, let's go here to f. It says w such that h of w is equal to 27. So, remember, h of w is equal to w cubed. So, we'll take w cubed equals 27, and we're solving for w. So, now we have w cubed equals 27. So, what we will have to do next here, we'll need to take the cube root of both sides. So, the cube root of w cubed is w, and the cube root of 27 is 3. So this is our final answer. Now we scroll on to the next page. It says example two, the function of y equals h of x has been drawn below. It says find the following. Now we have h of negative two. So this is what we need to do. We need to go on the graph here to negative two. Now that is our x value. So we go to where our y value is that hits the graph, which would be negative 4. So h of negative 2 is negative 4. Now it says x when h of x is equal to 5. So x is equal to. So now this is what we would do. So we would go where y is 5 because remember h of x, what this equals to is what y is actually equal to. So we will go where y is 5. And then we will look at our x. Our x is 4. Now we go h of 0. So we will go where our x is. Our x is 0. And we go down here on the graph. y is negative 3. Now it says x when h of x is equal to 0. So this is saying wherever y is equal to 0 at, this is where our answer, this is where x is equal to. So, so because this is y equals 0, what we're trying to find is the x-intercepts. This is where the graph hits the x-axis. It hits the x-axis at negative 6. And it also hits the x-axis at 2. So that is our final answer for D. Now for E, they want the domain of H. So remember the domain of H, we go for our x values. We go all the way here, which is negative 6. That's the furthest it goes out. And then it goes all the way to 4. So our domain would be negative 6 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. Now, the reason why we have these less than or equal to is because, remember, we have points here. They're not open circles, so that means they're included on the graph. Now, we can write this in um, interval notation. So we will have negative 6. Remember, we'll use our bracket because the negative 6 is included. And also 4. That is included as well. So that is our domain of H. Now we want to deal with the range of H. We will look at our Y values. Our lowest Y value is a negative 4. And our highest Y value is positive 5. So we will write our interval notation of negative 4 and also 5. Now remember, these are included. That's why we use the brackets. So we can write it in this inequality as well. Negative 4 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 5. And that is our answer. Now we go down here to example 3. It says, use the table to find the following. We have g of 4. So that means we go where x is 4 is, where x is 4, and then our final answer here would be 1. Now it says g of 0 plus g of 5. Now, 
g of 0 is negative 5. So we know this is negative 5 plus and g of 5. When we had g of 5, that equals 4. So we had negative 5 plus 4. Negative 5 plus 4 would give us negative 1. And that is our final answer. Now we come here to see. It says when x, when g of x equals negative 2. So we go here where g of x is negative 2. So then that would mean that x is 2. Now for d, it says what type of function does g of x appear to be explained? It appears to be linear. And that is because it's a perfect model for our slope intercept form. Because if we wrote this out, this would give us y is equal to 3 halves x minus 5. Now to prove that, if you look here, this is, we would have, if you look here, we have the y-intercept, 0, negative 5. So we know our b is negative 5. That's how we get the negative 5 here. Okay, now if we look, we have our rise, which is here, and this is our run. With our run, if you notice, everything is going up by 2's. So we know this is 2. So that's our denominator of 2. Because negative 2 to 0 is 2, 0 to 2 is 2, 2 to 4 is 2, and so on. So our run is 2. Now our rise, to go from negative 8 to negative 5, that's 3. To go from negative 5 to negative 2, that's 3. And to go to negative 2 to 1 is 3. And from 1 to 4 is 3. So we know this is 3, so that is our rise. So our rise is 3, our run is 2. So this is how we get our slope. Now we go to example 4. It says find all x and y intercepts of the graph of f of x is equal to 1 third x minus 2 fifths. Now what you have to do is remember the x-intercept, let's start off with that. The x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. So we know what we would consider y here, which would be this f of x. So we'll put that as 0 is equal to 1 third x minus 2 fifths. Let me scroll down a little bit here. So now we need to solve for x. Well, first let's find a common denominator. The common denominator at 3 and 5 is 15. So we'll multiply everything by 15 over 1. 15 over 1 times 0 is 0. 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 15, we know 5 times. 5 times 1x will be 5x. And then 5 goes into 5 once, and we know 5 goes into 15 3 times. 3 times negative 2 will give us a minus 6. So we add 6 on both sides, and we add 6 is equal to 5x. Divide each side by 5. And we will have 6 fifths, or we could write x is equal to 6 fifths. Okay, so now our x-intercept and we'll write this as an ordered pair would be 6 fifths comma 0. That's our x-intercept. Now we need to find our y-intercept. Now y-intercept that is when x is equal to 0. So we'll put in 0 for x. So we add f of 0 is equal to 1 third times 0 minus 2 fifths. So now we have f of 0 is equal to a negative 2 fifths. So our y-intercept is equal to the ordered pair would be 0, negative 2 fifths. And that is our answer. So this is our answer for the y-intercept. This is our answer for the x-intercept. Now, one other thing with the y-intercept, we could have found it much easier than what I showed here. Because remember, this is the same as y equals mx plus b. So we know that this should have been the uh, y-intercept. So we are done with section 2.3, part 1.